Hi, this is Jeff Kerner, uh, Business Unit Manager for Richardson Electronics. And on behalf of Richardson Electronics and United Silicon Carbide, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Five Design Tips for Easy Silicon Carbide Implementation. Your presenter today will be Dr. Zangda Lee, Senior Staff, R&D Engineering at United Silicon Carbide. Throughout the presentation, Mr. Lee will provide important links to additional technical content which support designing the United Silicon Carbide FETs, and we will provide webinar attendees with a copy of the presentation and a follow-up email. Finally, at the end of today's webinar, we will cover important technical FAQs. If you have a specific question, please send them to sales at unitedsiliconcarbide.com, and the team of United Silicon Carbide power experts will respond. Zangda, take it away. All right. So today I would like to give you five design tips. And uh, um, so let's look at what might be the situations that the power designers might be facing today. So the first scenario might be you already have your silicon-based design, and you just need to boost its power or efficiency. So what you might be looking for is the drop-in replacement filling carbide fat that works with your existing silicon-based design, uh, mainly the gate drive. Uh, you might be using a silicon MOSFET or IGBT. The second scenario might be you already made a decision to do a whole new design with silicon carbide fat and uh, you're looking for a safe transition from silicon MOSFET or IGBT to a silicon carbide fat based design. And the third scenario might be, uh, you already have a silicon carbide based design, but you need a alternative silicon carbide fat. So what this fat, uh, what you need is, this fat has to work with your existing silicon carbide based gate drive, and it has to achieve the same or better performance. So that leads us to the five design tips I would like to give you today. Uh, the first one is Silicon Carbide Fat Gate Drive Guidelines. The second is about using the Silicon Carbide Fat Body Dials. And the third is Silicon Carbide Fat uh, Technology Comparisons. And after that, uh, I would like to show uh, a few cases where and how you can use Silicon Carbide Fat. And the fifth is uh, what to do if you want to upgrade your existing design with a drop-in replacement solution. Okay, so first, let's look at the gate drive. So um, here is the figure comparing the silicon and the silicon carbide uh, gate drive. So for the silicon MOSFET and IGBT, uh, because their typical threshold is about five volts, uh, as a result, Usually, they do not require a negative gate drive, so you can drive it from zero, zero volts or turn off. And uh, the FET is usually fully on with VGS of about plus 12 volts. Now, the conventional silicon carbon MOSFET, the threshold is lower, which is usually about 2.5 volts. And as a result, typically they require minus 5 volt threshold to make sure the device stays off. And another thing is, to achieve the lowest possible RDS on, it is required to drive the v VGS to plus 15 to 20 volts. And for comparison, uh, United ICIC silicon carbide set, uh, the threshold is five volts, which is similar to silicon set. As a result, there's no need to use any negative gate drive. You can use zero volts for turn off, and for turn on, you can use 12 volts because at plus 12 volts, the device is already at its lowest RDS on. So this is really great because it's compatible to the standard silicon gate drive. And also it is compatible with the conventional silicon carbon MOSFET drives. So really you have both choices at hand. And uh, the switching speed you can control by external RG on and RG off. And you can use this number to suppress the raining uh, at a minimal energy loss. So uh, 
At Richardson Electronics, you can find a variety of choices of cyber components. And uh, at the United SSC website down here, uh, here's the link if you would like, would like to learn more about number design. And uh, now how about the uh, VGS max rating? So for typical silicon MOSFET or IGBTs, uh, the max rating is usually minus 20 to plus 20 volts. But for the conventional zinc carbon MOSFET, the VGS rating is quite limited, especially in the negative side, which is typically minus five to minus 10 volts. And the reason for this is that uh, the conventional silicon carbon MOSFET uh, threshold tends to drift towards zero volts if you apply a two negative VGS. So that's why you really cannot exceed this uh, to guarantee its long-term reliability. For the United SIC silicon carbon set, uh, the VGS rating is plus minus 25 volts, which is similar or even better than silicon devices and is much, much better than the conventional silicon carbon MOSFET. Uh, and there's no threshold drift mechanism at all because the gate is made of silicon uh, SI uh, oxide instead of silicon carbide uh, SiO2. Uh, and further, there's a built-in ESD protection belt between the gate and source to enhance its robustness. Okay, so now we have learned about the zinc carbide gate drive guidelines. <clears throat> Let's look at another uh, very important aspect, that's the uh, body dial. So <clears throat> for the conventional zinc carbon MOSFET, the body dial the VF is quite high. It's usually about uh, 4.5 volts. And as a result, uh, if you use this body dial for DC conduction, this 4.5 volts is going to produce a very high DC conduction loss. So as a result, uh, you really have to implement either the synchronized rectification or put a silicon carbide anti-parallel diode next to the MOSFET. So this makes the design more complicated and also uh, adds some cost. And uh, further, some silicon carbide MOSFET diode, body diode even degrade, uh, meaning the VF is getting higher after long-term use. And this is was because of the uh, some of the silicon carbide MOSFET uh, the silicon carbide material defects uh, can cause this if you uh, use the body dial. Now, for the United SIC silicon carbide FET, uh, the body dial VF is 1.5 volts at the rate of current. You can see in this figure here. Uh, and the knee voltage is only 0 0.7 volts, very low. And this is similar to silicon MOSFET. So because this VF, body dial VF is so low, you do not need to use synchronized rectification, or uh, you also you do not need to use any zinc carbide anti-parallel dial. Uh, and this simplifies your design and reduces your cost. And this body dial VF does not degrade at all. And this is because this body dial is actually a silicon body dial instead of silicon carbide. And uh, uh, I will show you later on how the reverse conduction works uh, in the following slide. So uh, another very important aspect of the body dial performance <coughs> is the switching. So how, uh, what's the QRR during reverse recovery? Um, so let's do a comparison. So this plot here is the reverse recovery switching uh, waveform uh, of a silicon carbide, conventional silicon carbide MOSFET at 150 degrees C. That's the blue curve here. And you can see the QRR is quite high. It's 220 nanofoulombs. And uh, if you are using this silicon carbide MOSFET with a silicon carbide anti-parallel dial, the QR will go up even further to 275 nanocoulomb. Now, <clears throat> for comparison, the United SIC silicon carbide FET, the QRR is much, much lower. It's only 105 nanocoulomb. Uh, and note this is at 150C. And this reduction in QRR can uh, reduce the switching loss by a lot. Uh, and also note that uh, the United SSC zinc carbide FET QRR only increased about 10% from room temperature to 
150 degrees C. So this is very good. So you do not have uh, a switching uh, loss degradation when the temperature goes up. So after looking at the body doubt, uh, I would like to compare the two major sin carbon fat technologies. So this table here on the left is uh, the United SIC sin carbon fat, and on the right is the conventional sin carbon MOSFET. So looking at the threshold voltage, the United SIC set has a threshold voltage of five volts, uh, and the, but the conventional sin carbon MOSFET threshold is uh, quite lower, it's about 2.2 .2 volts typical. And as a result for gate drive, uh, the United SIC sitting car by FED, uh, you can use the standard silicon gate drive, which is 0 to uh, 12 volts, or you can use the sin car by uh, gate drive of minus 10 to plus 20 volts. So both are okay. Uh, however, for the uh, conventional sin car by MOSFET, uh, a negative VG, uh, minus 5 volts is a must, and also you have to drive it to high enough voltage, about 20 volts. For the intrinsic body doubt, uh, the United SIC sin carbon fat has a low QRR and only has 10% increase over temperature, uh, but for the conventional sin carbon MOSFETs, the QRR is much higher, uh, and it increases with temperature about three times. And also, it has a high VF, meaning the DC conduction loss is a lot higher. Uh, so both types of sin carbide devices have avalanche capability, and uh, both types have short circuit capability. And uh, the United <coughs> SIC sin carbide set has a stronger short circuit uh, capability. Now let's look inside what's uh, what's in this United SIC sin carbide set. So here is the TO247 uh, package. Uh, it has the standard pinout uh, being gate, drain, source. So inside this package, we have packaged two chips. One is a sling carbide JFET chip, which is a high voltage, for example, 1200 volt or 650 volt high voltage chip. And here is a silicon MOSFET chip, which is the low voltage chip, and it does not see uh, high voltage stress. Uh, and the two chips are connected in this uh, cut code fashion, uh, where you have the JFET source connect to the drain to the silicon uh, silicon MOSFET, uh, and uh, so in so com these two uh, work together, and uh, from the outside it works as a normally offset with the a standard pinout GDS. So this is just an example of the TO247 3D package uh, uh, at United SIC. We also offer a variety of packages, and you can visit this link here uh, to see all the packages we have uh, we have to offer. So, how does this uh, United SSC sin carbon fat work? So, in the on state uh, during forward conduction, uh, the current simply flows through the JFET channel. The JFET is normally on device, then through the silicon uh, MOSFET channel. So. So here you apply the VGS of uh, more than five volts to turn turn on the silicon MOSFET, so the current can flow through the both chips, and the whole silicon carbon fat is on. In the reverse conduction mode, um, the silicon fat is off, VGS is zero volts or negative, so the current will flow through the body diode of the silicon MOSFET, and then it will flow through the channel of the silicon carbide JFET. And because this silicon carbide JFET is a normally on device, so the channel is on, so the current can simply flow through both devices. And note that uh, it's flowing through the PN junction inside a silicon MOSFET, and that is why the knee voltage is only 0 0.7 volts, and there is no uh, body doubt degradation mechanism at all. Now, in the off state uh, blocking mode, uh, the VGS is zero volts or negative. So the silicon MOSFET is turned off. So the, it will support less than 25 volts. And because 
the two chips are connected in the cascode fashion. Uh, this will be providing a negative 20 volts uh, gate bias to the sitting carbide JSET. And this turns off the sitting carbide JSET, so the JSET can support all the high voltage. And as a result, this silicon MOSFET does not see uh, any uh, high voltage stress during the blocking mode. So after looking at uh, the two different uh, silicon carbide fat uh, technologies, now let's look at where and how can silicon carbide fat be used. So I would like to give you a few case studies. Uh, the first case study is a totem pole PFC. It's uh, 85 to 265 AC input, uh, 400 volt DC output operating at 100 kilohertz in continuous mode CCM. So here's the cir uh, circuit diagram. And uh, here on the figure here shows the excellent body doubt performance. So the blue curve here is the United SIC 650 volt sitting carbon fat. You can see how small the QRR is. Uh, it's only uh, 92 nanocoulomb. For comparison, it's a silicon superjunction. Uh, and this QRR is as high as 6 microcoulomb. So this is the reason why uh, you really cannot use superjunction, silicon superjunction, uh, for this type of uh, CCM totem pole PFC circuit. And uh, here is the efficiency curves of the United SIC 650 volt in this uh, totem pole. Uh, for the low line, uh, the, the efficiency is, is up to 98.5%. And for the high line, 230 volt AC, we can achieve 99.5% efficiency. So this is really great. And uh, the typical application for this circuit is uh, onboard uh, EV charger, OBC. And uh, uh, we have a lot of customer interested in this, uh, in this device for this uh, particular application. And uh, um, if you like to learn more, uh, you're welcome to visit our website here. Uh, uh, here, this link here, you can find the detailed totem pole reference design. Uh, including the bomb list, the circuit diagram, schematics, and uh, uh, the app note about how we design uh, and control the circuit. Okay, so the second case study I would like to show is a high voltage fist shift full bridge. So this circuit is 700 to 800 volt DC input, 40 to 60 volt DC output, and uh, it's a soft switching circuit with the ZVS turn on. So here, um, it really showcases that the United SICC in carbon fat is perfect for soft switching applications. You can see from the efficiency versus output curve, um, the efficiency is really good, uh, up to 96 to 97%. Uh, and with this high output voltage, you can use a full bridge shot key dialed rectifier uh, to get the lowest loss. So, so this circuit is very good for uh, on or off board EV charger, uh, or it can be used for uh, on board DC DC. And again, uh, down here is the link if, if you would like to learn more about this high voltage uh, fist shift for bridge reference design. Okay, so next I would like to uh, talk about. Uh, upgrading your existing design with dropping drop uh, replacement solution. So uh, here are a few cases. So first, your current solution might be a conventional sling carbide MOSFET. Uh, so you already implemented uh, the minus five volts to plus 20 volts gate drive. So the United ISIC solution, uh, would be you can just use the United SIC sitting carbon fat uh, as a drop in replacement uh, because the gate drive of minus five to plus 20 volts also works. And the benefit would be you can achieve better or same efficiency. And uh, uh, note, note the tip I would like to give you is you might want to adjust the RG on or RG off to achieve your desired 
uh, switching speed because the United SIC Zinc Carbon FET uh, is a very fast switching device. Um, then you're, if you're using silicon uh, 1200 volt MOSFET, then the United SIC 1200 volt silicon set, Zinc Carbon FET, uh, can serve as a replacement. And again, it will boost efficiency and uh, it's fully compatible with silicon MOSFET gate drive. If you are using silicon high-speed IGBT, then uh, the United ICs, SIC Zinc Carbon FET can serve as a replacement for the IGBT plus FRD co-pack. Uh, and again, you can it will boost your efficiency. And uh, since Zinc United SIC FET is uh, switches much faster, so it depends on your current circuit layout. So you might need to relay out. Uh, your circuit to reduce the parasitics. Um, but worth no pointing out is there will be no problem with short circuit capability even if you're using a high gate bias. And uh, lastly, your current solution might be a silicon based uh, high speed superjunction MOSFET. Then, United as I see, offer a 650 volt class Zinc Carbon FET can serve as a replacement. Uh, for the superjunction MOSFET. And again, uh, it will boost efficiency uh, and uh, it has similar COSS but much, much lower EOSS. Um, and also, uh, it has much better dialed QRR. So this enables, uh, for example, the uh, CCM mode totem pole uh, application, uh, which the silicon superjunction MOSFET cannot do. So here's a case study of a dropping drop, drop replacement for silicon superjunction MOSFET. So uh, this is a phase shift for bridge uh, soft switching uh, circuit. Uh, so it was using a 40 uh, medium 650 volt silicon superjunction and uh, which was replaced by the United ISIC 650 volt zinc carbide set. So here from the efficiency curves, you can see there's a boost in efficiency across the whole output power range. So this is really great because uh, a lot of uh, users, for example, in the server power uh, applications, really cares about the efficiency, not only at full load, but also at mid and light load. Uh, another benefit that you can see here from the switching waveforms is um, the silicon superjunction MOSFET has a much longer uh, delay due, uh, due to the CISS. But for the, uh, after replacing it with the United SIC, Zinc Carbon FET, the delay is much, much lower. And uh, so this means you can you, uh, do much faster switching uh, due to this uh, greatly reduced capacity. So uh, now I've given you the five design tips. And uh, at United SIC, uh, we offer a, a whole variety of devices to help with your design. Uh, we have the Schottky dials, Zinc Carbide Schottky dials, uh, the standalone Zinc Carbide J sets, and the, the Zinc Carbide sets, uh, which comes in the two uh, categories the UJ3C series for the soft switching, and the UF3C that's more optimized towards hard switching. Um, they come at 650 volt class and 1200 volt class uh, with a very low RDS song and a great uh, body dial performances. Uh, for the package wise, we have the standard TO220, uh, D2 pack, D pack, and the TO473 D. They all have the standard GDSP now. Uh, also, we have the 4 lead uh, TO247, uh, which is in production and in stock at Richardson. And we also have the 7 lead D2 pack. Uh, the samples are available now, and uh, we expect full production and stocking by next quarter. And again, if you would like to learn more about our, our uh, product lineout, uh, you can visit the link below here. So uh, where to buy? Uh, Richardson Electronics is our global supplier uh, of the United SIC products. Uh, and uh, 
here is their website. And uh, if you would like to more, uh, find more information, uh, you're welcome to visit the United SIC website, unitedsic.com, where you can find the data sheet and SPICE models, uh, app notes and white papers, uh, and uh, our technical blog, and also our very uh, comprehensive product selector guide, and also the demo boards and reference designs, uh, including the circuit schematics, the bomb list, and uh, also the uh, app notes. Okay, so next, uh, I would like to answer a few questions. So we have already got a few questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, why does United SIC and CARBASTAT QRR only increase so little over temperature, uh, which is about 10% from 25C to 150C? So uh, this is because for United SIC and CARBASTAT, uh, most of the QRR comes from the capacitive charge of the thin carbide JFET COSS. And since it's a capacitive charge, uh, it does not increase its temperature. Uh, a very small portion of the QR does come from the low voltage silicon MOSFET body dial, and uh, that portion does increase with temperature. So uh, overall, combining the two, uh, that's why you have about 10% uh, QR increase, uh, which is still very small. The second question is, um, in the data sheet, you recommended using a large RG of 20 ohms for turnoff. Why is that? Okay, so this is because the United SIC Sin Carbon Set uh, has a very small CGD. So it tends to turn off very fast. It's a very fast switching device, uh, which also gives you very low turnoff loss. And uh, what we have found is uh, using about 20 ohm, about 20 ohms RG off, you can slow down the turn off DPDT uh, to the desir desirable level which is about 80 volt per, per nanosecond, which is quite, still quite fast and gives you very low turn off, uh, turn off loss. Um, so basically you can, uh, you can achieve the same or better turn off loss uh, as the conventional slim carbon MOSFETs uh, using this uh, 20 ohm RG off. Um, for the third question is uh, on slide 26, uh, what is the reason for the big efficiency improvement at light load? Okay, so go back to slide 26. Okay, here. Okay, so this is the drop-in replacement uh, of, a, of a silicon superjunction. Um, so here you see this improvement of the uh, efficiency. Um, so because of because this circuit is a phase shift for bridge, uh, it means that uh, it's a soft turn on. There's uh, very low or no E on loss. Uh, all the loss is uh, turn off loss and the, the conduction loss. So at high load, uh, this loss is the combination of the conduction loss and the turn off loss. Now at light load, uh, because the uh, device barely conducts, uh, or only conducts for a very short period of time. So the conduction loss uh, is quite low. Um, and the, this loss is dominated by the turn off loss. And uh, because the United SIC Fed has much lower uh, EOSS than the silicon superjunction, so the turn off loss is much lower. Uh, that's why you see this big uh, efficiency improvement at the light load. And uh, this is very important for, for example, for power server applications, where the goal is to really to improve the efficiency, uh, not only here at high load, but also at uh, mid load and light load, because the server operates at all different loads throughout uh, its lifetime. So, um, due to time restraints, I cannot answer more, uh, uh, all the questions. So if you have more questions, uh, please feel free to email us at sales at unitedsic.com. And uh, again, on behalf of uh, 
Richards Electronics and the United SIC. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, thank you very much. Goodbye.